Hello and welcome to ukramedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today I'm going to show you how to create this logo reveal entirely in After Effects. A lot of you have been asking me how to create something like this since I have a very similar animation in my open. And you know, I finally get around to it, but I just realized that my open is almost four years old and that's, that's pretty crazy. I, I think I need an update soon. Uh, but anyway, without any further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so here we are in After Effects, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition by either clicking on this icon in here or just pressing Control N on your keyboard. And I'm going to keep you know my composition at 1920 by 1080, and uh, frame rate 29.97 is fine. And I'll label it Logo Reveal. Hit OK when you're done. And so next, I'm going to make sure that I have Ellipse selected, and then double click on it to bring it into my composition. And I'm going to take the size of this uh, ellipse. I'm going to take it down to 800 by 800. Okay, and then I'm, I'm going to right click on this uh, ellipse path and then do convert to Bezier path. And so what that does, it basically collapses it now to where I can actually control, you know, select each point. So I'm going to select this bottom point and then hit delete to get rid of it. And so I'm going to select this one and then hit G on my keyboard to bring up the uh, pen tool. And if you hold Alt and click and drag on this uh, handle, and if you hold Shift, it'll snap it. So I'm going to snap it at about 90 degrees angle like so. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Hold Alt, click and drag, and Shift to snap. And so what I end up with here is just a half a circle. And so next what I'll do is animate the scale property of this uh, ellipse uh, shape. So I'm going to go to Transform Property here and then select the scale. And then hit S twice to solo it to where we only see scale. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I'm on frame zero and I'm going to hit uh, click on this stopwatch to set my first keyframe. And if you hit shift page down once, you'll go forward on your timeline 10 frames. And if you just hit page down by itself, you'll go one frame and then if you hit it again, another frame. So we're, we are at frame number 12 and I'm going to set another keyframe in here. And I'm basically going to reverse this 100. So I'm going to set to negative 100 on the uh, Y axis. So what it does basically, it just reverse this uh, animation you know, nothing exciting. So let's do some, let's add some love to it. So I'm going to select this first keyframe and do control shift F9 to make it easy ease out. And then select the second one and do shift F9 to make it easy is in. And so that, that made it a bit better. And so let's select uh, this first one again and do control shift K to bring up our keyframe velocity window. And I'm going to take the influence down to 20 on the first one. And I'm going to select the second one, do control shift K again. And I'm going to take it up to 40. And so this is what we have so far. Nothing too exciting, but let's uh, let's keep working with this. So let's do this. Let's select this ellipse and then do control D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to select this duplicate and click and drag and put it at the bottom of the first one. And so now if I select the shape layer, hit U on my keyboard to see my keyframes, I'm going to actually uh, take the keyframes of the second of, you know, the one we just duplicated. I'm just going to select it and hit delete to get rid of them. And so what we have now is, uh, you know, ellipse one, which is animated. And then we have ellipse two, it's just static. So that's important to point out. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, go to add here and then add this merge paths. And so make sure that it's the third one down, you know, right below the ellipse one and two. And so I'm going to set the mode to uh, exclude intersections. And it, it gives us something interesting here. So... As you can see, it's a pretty cool little animation, but let's uh, keep adding to it. So I'm going to select the, these three things and then control G to group them together. So now they're in the group, which is what I want. And so I'm going to select this group one and hit control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to select this duplicate and click and drag and drop it right below my first group. And uh, we're actually going to do the same thing we just did earlier, but you know, we have, you know, two duplicate animations. And they're kind of over top of each other. But I'm going to hit U. And I'm going, to, I'm going to offset this animation. So this animation is 12 frames. But I'm going to take the half of it. So 6. And I'm going to select these keyframes. And I'm going to click and drag it to where the first one is at frame 6. So now we have first one. And then second one. You can see it right here. But the problem is uh, we don't really see it in our comp. So let's fix that. I'm going to go back to group 1, group 2. And so I'm going to add the same thing we, we've done before, merge paths. Make sure it's the third one down. And then in here, 
we're going to do the same thing. Instead of add, let's do exclude intersections. And now it gives us something interesting. Let me preview that. So right away you can see that we're, we're heading in the right direction. So let's label this uh, reveal element. And so next let's add the, uh, the sphere. So to create a sphere, I'm going to double click on this ellipse again, and I'm going to change the size of it to the same uh, you know size we, we've had before. So 800 by 800. And uh, I'm going to label it. Let's do, no, color. First is going to be color. Okay. So what I'm going to do is drop it underneath our reveal element, and I'm just going to hide it for right now. And so now all we have is just solid uh, circle, and I'm going to actually duplicate it. So I'm going to do Control D, and this one I'm going to label it uh, sphere. And so I'm going to apply, if you go to effects and presets here, and type CC sphere, and I'm going to, while it's selected, just double click on it, and it will apply this effect on top of your sphere here. And I'm going to solo this for right now. And so now you can see that we're getting the sphere we want. But uh, it's too small, and we know the size of our circle here is uh, 800. So the radius of it would be 400. So let's type the radius in here, 400. And it gives us exactly what we want here. And so under light here, let's take the light direction, uh, make sure that the light's hitting from the top. So I'm going to zero that down. And the light height uh, is actually, I'm going to take it down some. So let's see if we can, yeah, take it down like so. Like 60 is fine. And uh, next, I'm going to uh, play with the shading in here. And so I'm going to play with the reflection map. And I'm going to bring in an image for this part. And uh, you can bring in any kind of image, but I'm going to actually bring in an HDRI. And by the way, this HDRI I did not create. It was created by my uh, co-worker Chris Watson back in 2012. And uh, he was kind enough to let me use this for my tutorial. And in fact, he's cool with me giving it away to you guys. So if you if you would like to have this, you can go to uh, ukremedia.com and download the uh, project file of this tutorial. And uh, you'll get uh, this HDRI for free from Chris. So a little about Chris. Chris is actually an art director at Fox Sports, but he's an amazing uh, animator, motion graphics designer, traditional artist. In fact, he can do some crazy drawings, and I've seen him sculpt stuff just all around. He's just an amazing artist. There's not much Chris can do. If you watch NFL on Fox Sports uh, this upcoming season, you'll see the famous uh, robot whose name is Cletus. And uh, Chris, not only did he design him from scratch, but he also you know, modeled him, textured him, uh, rigged him, and uh, he's also an animator, so he animates the guy as well. So he's just way out there, uh, extremely smart, extremely talented, and he's a super nice guy too. So Chris, man, thank you so much uh, for allowing me to use this. And by the way, if you'd like to check out his work, uh, you can go to uh, chwatson.com, and I'll be sure to include this uh, link at the bottom of this video. Let's get back to our tutorial here. I'm going to go back into my composition in here and select the sphere. And uh, we're going to actually bring in this HDRI. And I'm going to tur uh, make sure make it not visible. And I'm going to go back to the sphere. And inside this uh, effect control, I'm going to select this HDRI. And right away, as you can see, nothing is happening. But if you go to this reflective option and just slide it to the right like so, you can control how much reflection you can actually see. So you can you can see that it wraps it pretty pretty well. It looks pretty believable. So I'm going to take it down to about 10 for right now. Uh, that's good. So next, what I'm going to do is uh, actually duplicate the sphere, and I'm going to label this uh, reflection. And uh, I will do Control Shift E to erase all all of the effects on this uh, shape layer. And uh, so next, what I'll do is uh, instead of this fill. Uh, I'm going to uh, apply, you know, select, check this uh, radial gradient. And now you can see that I have a nice uh, little radial, radial gradient. And I'm going to play with it and, you know, make it the size of my circle. And uh, so that's good. You know, I can adjust. I don't want it to be super black in the middle. So something like that is fine. But the cool thing about this now, I can uh, take this reflection, right? And then uh, do like a screen. Uh, mode or maybe like uh, overlay and play around with this and add like a reflection on top, right? But uh, right, it's still we can take it a bit further. So I'm gonna do probably let's do let's do screen and I'm gonna take it, hit T and take the opacity down pretty low. 
So, but I'm going to take it a bit further and uh, apply bulge uh, on top of this reflection. And so what bulge does, you know, it obviously bulges things, uh, but I know that the uh, radius is 400. So I'm just going to set to uh, the size of my circle. So you can see that it's right around the edge and you can exaggerate the bulge, you know. So I'm going to keep it like 1.5. And the cool thing about it, now I can actually move the reflection and as you can see that it's uh, it's wrapping around the the, uh, the sphere which is kind of cool so I'm gonna like bring it slightly closer over here and I can still adjust it you know like so uh, so definitely you can you can do whatever you want with uh, with this reflection but I kind of want something here uh, like a like a soft box right above it you know yeah you can adjust the opacity of it like so I'm gonna keep it at 35 for right now and you know, I don't like that it's sharp in here. I kind of want it to be more uh, faded. So I'm going to select this reflection and go to Rectangle Tool. And if you draw a rectangle on top of the shape layer, it creates another shape layer. But if you want to draw a mask, you can just switch it here uh, and then just draw a mask like so. And I'm going to hit select this and hit F to see the uh, feathering options. And I'm going to take it up some. Let's do like 300. And uh, so, let's see. So I kind of wanted to slowly kind of fade it to where it's not as sharp here. So that's that's probably going to work. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? The thing about this uh, sphere that we created, I actually want to make it to where um, it's uh, blend, like use a blending mode on top of my color. So in other words, I don't want any color on this layer. So I'm going to make it, white so it's just a I just want the value of it uh, so and I'm gonna make it white and do multiply and so now it applies it to the layer below basically it creates the uh, shading that I like but the problem is it's a little too dark for me so I'm gonna bring uh, levels in and uh, put it on top of my sphere in here and let me extend that a bit and so I'm gonna adjust the uh, Output black. So I'm going to take it down some. As you can see, as I'm doing that, uh, it brightens it up, which is what I'm going for. Something like that is fine. Uh, and uh, I mean, we pretty much have it uh, have it created the sphere. And so next, I'm going to make my uh, reveal element visible. And so as you can see, it's right on top of it. And I'm going to go to the last keyframe here and hit N to uh, crop my uh, my composition uh, in a timeline here and then if you do control shift X it's gonna trim it so essentially this is what we have but what I want to do now is uh, for this uh, reveal element to only show me the, the sphere in other words let that be the mask and so to do that I'm just gonna select the uh, stencil alpha and as you can see it's revealing the uh, everything below that so before we get any further, let me let me uh, change the name of this comp, Control K, and uh, here I'm gonna label it uh, Sphere One. Okay, and so now I'm gonna create a new uh, composition, Control N to create a new comp, and so this one I'm gonna label uh, Logo Reveal, and then duration probably like 300 for right now, and so I'm gonna select these two comps and drop them into this comps folder. And so now I'm going to select the sphere one and click and drag and drop it into my new composition that I just created. And I'm going to bring a new null into my scene. So control shift alt Y and I'm going to label it control. And so now I'm going to add some controls inside uh, this null that will control things in this composition. So let me show you what I mean. So if you type controls uh, control in uh, this effects window, you can see uh, some expression controls. And so we're going to use some of these. So let's say I want to control the, uh, so let's say this reveal, if you hit R to see rotation, I want to be able to control the uh, rotation uh, of this reveal. In other words, I just want to rotate the reveal and nothing else. Because if I rotate it here, you can see that everything moves. It just doesn't look very natural. So to do that, I'm going to uh, select this control and double click on the angle control and it will automatically uh, drop this angle control 
uh, in, inside this control node, which is cool. And if you hit E, you can uh, see it here on the, in the timeline. So I'm going to select this angle and do control alt C to copy property with uh, property links. So now I can go into this composition here and uh, select this rotation, do control V. You can see that it's red now, which means the expression has been applied. So now I can control uh, the rotation of the reveal element straight from this composition, which is cool. So let's see what else can we uh, control. So let's see, let's do color. Uh, so I'm going to track it down. So I think it's in here, fill. So here's the color. So what if I want to control color straight from here? And so all we have to do, just double click on this color control while the uh, null is selected and just double click on it here. And uh, now I'm going to select this color and do control alt C again, and then go to this composition and do select this color and do control V. And uh, as you can see, the expression has been applied. So now, um, we can change the color in here and it will do that for any other comp. So let's go to library here for a second. Just select that orange. So that's good. And uh, so let's see, what else can we uh, do? By the way, let's label this uh, color one. Let's see, let's go back to this here. Uh, we can probably adjust the, uh, let's see, let's hit E to see our ref uh, effects. And this reflective, hit S to solve it, we can probably adjust the reflection of our sphere. So to do that, we're going to go back to our control here. And I'm going to double click on the slider in here to uh, bring it into our uh, control null. And so I'm going to change that to uh, sphere reflection. And so here, here it is. So I'm going to select the slider and do control alt C to copy it. And then go over here and uh, let's see, I'm going to select this reflective and do control V to paste it. So that's cool. Uh, and so now you can see that we can adjust the reflection of it. So I'm going to leave it at 10 or so for right now. And let's see what else. Um, so let's go back into this composition. And we can also probably adjust the uh, reflection of this light uh, reflection. So if you hit T on your keyboard, you can adjust it. So like, let's go back to here and bring in a new slider, double click on it, and we'll label it uh, light uh, reflection. Okay, and here it is in our uh, timeline. So I'm gonna select the slider here and do Control Alt C again, and go over here and do Control V to paste it. So now, we have uh, quite a bit of control here. So I'm gonna probably take it up to about 30 uh, or so. Uh, and then, you know, the subtle reflection of the sphere is probably fine. So yeah, now we can directly control things from this comp, which is kind of cool. So now I'm gonna go back to this project window and I'm gonna select this sphere and do control D to duplicate it. And so now, uh, I can duplicate the one in a timeline as well and then go to probably frame six and uh, do select this and do um, uh, open bracket to to basically uh, put this uh, layer right in front of this time indicator. So now we have one and then second one, but you can't see the second one because it's the same color and you really can't tell the difference. There's like a small line here, but I'm going to select this one, which is duplicated in here and do alt click and drag and replace it. Automatically you can see that it's been replaced. And now we can go into the second one. And uh, in fact, let's go back to this control layer here. And I'm gonna select this con uh, color control and control D to duplicate it. Now we have second color. And uh, if you, let's change it to something else for right now. So something like that. So now if you hit E and do color number two, and to select it and do control alt C and go back to sphere two. Now we can just select this uh, color here and do control V. And you can see that it's now drawing or it's getting the color from this control, which is kind of cool. Uh, and so yeah, we have two different ones. So let's duplicate this uh, second one again, control D. And this time let's go frame 12 and do open bracket on your keyboard to uh, snap it right in the, 
in front of this time indicator. And this time we're going to do the same thing in here. Control D to duplicate that. And uh, we're going to go inside here and back to this control and select this second color and do control D to duplicate that. And let's change the color so we can see what we're doing. And so now we're going to link uh, this third color. Do control Alt C to copy the property with property links and go back to the sphere number three and select the color and do control V. And so now we should be able to have all three of them. Make sure that's the case. Doesn't look like, oh yeah, we have to replace it. So I'll select this one and do Alt, uh, hold Alt and click and drag and drop. And yeah, all of them have been replaced. So let's do the order. I want uh, the green one to be first. So I'm gonna go into color controls here. And so orange one will be second. Let's do like a green color like that or something similar. That's good. And then the last one is gonna be more like a bluish. Cool, so like that is fine. And we can adjust the rotation. Let's do like negative 40. So it kind of comes from the side. Uh, great, uh, so let's see. I also have some, like a background I created for one of the tutorials. And by the way, you can watch that tutorial. I'll include the link in the description of this video. And with that tutorial, there's a project file that comes with a bunch of uh, backgrounds that you can use uh, for your projects or whatever. So be sure to download that and uh, you can use it for any project you want. But I'm going to click and drag and drop into my composition here. And so something like that is fine. But the only problem that I see, it's just it just looks too boring here. So I'm going to uh, do a bevel. Uh, let's do bevel alpha. And I'm going to click and drag and drop on one of them for right now just to see what it does. See how it creates the line here, which is kind of interesting so what i'm going to do actually uh, i'm going to let's see let's see uh let's do e for a second and uh let's do this let's do this i'm going to select this and hit s twice to solve it and if you hold alt on your uh, keyboard and click on this uh light angle and just you know link them up here like so so that the angle is the exact same as the uh, rotation here for the angle. So when you're rotating it, the light will always be on this side. So it's minor, but it will help later on. But you can see how that's separating it from uh, from the blue. And in fact, now what we can do, I'm going to uh, select this Control Alt C with property links and just paste it on on the other ones as well. So that kind of yeah, it added so much more personality. You can see that it's a uh, it looks much more real than it did before. Okay, uh, that's you know we're almost there. So we have uh, all this created. So now let's uh, let's bring in a logo. So I'm going to bring in this Euchre Media logo and drop it right uh, at the bottom of these three. And you can see it's very small. So I'm going to uh, definitely scale it up some. Oops, wrong one. And uh, so let's scale that up some like so. So now we have like reveal, uh, yeah, I think it's fine here. So it covers it all about here. So I'm gonna uh, trim it, Alt, open bracket. So we have nothing and then it kind of trims it. And then let's do like maybe what? Uh, page down twice or so. And we're going to duplicate these two, Control D and drag them to the top. So here it is like, maybe do one more, or one more page down once more. So, okay, and we're gonna cut it about here. Alt, close bracket. And uh, let's do page down three times here as well. One, two, three. And do N to uh, trim our comp area and do Control Shift X to trim it all together. So let's preview this. All right, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. 
I hope you found it useful. If you would like to have the project file of this tutorial, you can download it at ukramedia.com and I'll be sure to include a link to it in the bottom of this video. And uh, like this video, share it, comment. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. And until next time, my name is Sergei Praknevsky and this is ukramedia.com. Thank you.